Greetings fellow adventurers, in this video I'll be going over the rare mobs in the Forbidden Reach and tips for some of them that have nasty abilities. Join me as we explore the best strategies for efficiently farming these rares, which aren't that rare, so you can maximize your loot. So grab your weapons and let's get started. To get set up for your farming session, it is highly recommended that you use the rare scanner add-on to get notified of when a rare pops up on the map. When using the rare scanner add-on, in the options, uncheck the ignore alerts for already killed completed entities so that you continue getting alerts for rares throughout the day. If you're someone that hates add-ons and want to go about your adventures without them, there is still a way to give you an edge on your farming. In Morkut Village, talk with the Maruk Centaur representative, Storykeeper Ashek, and purchase the item Essence of Divination for 2000 Elemental Overflow. This buff lasts until the next daily reset and will give you an emote message that acts as a 2 minute forecast for rare spawns. Each rare has a specific emote and you will get an ancestral spirit map marker at the location of the rare. If you arrive early at the location, you'll see a Tuscar spirit and if you click on them, they have a buff that acts as a timer for when the rare will spawn. Two minutes is plenty of time to get to any location in the Forbidden Reach, so you'll never miss out on a rare spawn. Now I'll go over the 16 non-profession related rare spawns there are in the Reach, covering their abilities and the emote you'll see in chat when using the Essence of Divination. These rares will be marked on your map when they spawn. Starting in no particular order, we have Ishira. The spawn forecast emote for Ishira is the Ancient Ones are ever watchful. Her abilities are Judgment Wave, that is a frontal cone attack that stuns you, Tears Wrath where she shoots out a bunch of swirlies for you to avoid, and Expulsion Drones where she spawns a bunch of drones that will target a player and begin casting Expel. If Expel is not interrupted, then it will launch you off the platform into the water. Next is Rise of the Drowned. The emote for Rise's spawn forecast is the sea tried to take her. She will cast Drowned Whispers that create purple swirly target areas that are impact points for the slow moving globs she sends out. If these globs are not absorbed by players, then they will spawn a damned warrior. Pull Under that will pull all players toward her when she begins casting. You'll want to run out of the purple circle area to avoid damage and shadow bolt volley that can be interrupted. Next we have Lady Shazra whose emote for her spawn forecast is she serves the call of the deep and her abilities are chilling wave that sends a wave out in front of her, frostbolt volley that hits everyone in an area and can be interrupted, frost blink where she'll blink back to her starting position, and crustaceous hex that will turn everyone into a crab with an action button. Go to one of the totems in the area and use the action button to attack and destroy it. Up next is Veltrax. The spawn forecast emote for Veltrax is he binds the winds to his will. He casts galvanic focus that targets three players that puts a ring around them and will stun anyone inside that ring. Static summoning that will spawn a static charge and Ionic Thrust, which targets whoever he has aggro on. One of the more challenging spawns to get to is Pyrachnus, that is a fire spider found inside the War Crash. The emote that forecasts its spawn is it crawls out from the fires. To reach Pyrachnus, as you enter the cave, hit the speed boost on your dragon to try to get as far inside the cave before being dismounted. If you're lucky, you might be able to reach the bottom of the stairway. Take a left when entering the main room and head toward the swirling air at the edge of the cliff. Reach it will launch you over the lava area and will cause you to float down to where Paracnus is. Paracnus's abilities are Magma Spew, which is a frontal cone attack, Burning Fangs that targets a single player, and Scorching Clutch that spawns eggs on the platform that will hatch into fiery hatchlings. After killing Paracnus, you jump in the lava and quickly click the gemstone of return to return back to the entrance of the crash. On the south shores of the Reach, there is Grugoth the Hole Crusher. The spawn forecast emote for Grugoth is the Goliath has reached our shores. He will cast Crash Course that when he finishes casting, he will begin channeling the spell and hitting the ground causing swirlies on the ground that are in impact points for rocks that are tossed up. He will also cast Hard to Port where he blade storms while targeting a player. In a cave near the center of the reach, we have Vraken the Hunter. The spawn forecast emote for Vraken is his hunt never ceases. He will cast Wing Shredder that sends out a twirling blade that circles around the area, spike traps that he throws at a player and will root them and do damage if they don't move in time, and sticky bombs where he attaches bombs to three players and will explode causing damage to anyone 
down in the circle. At the top of the tower in the northeast area of the reach is one of the more dangerous rares, Worm Slayer Angvardi and Nidar the Porto Drake. The spawn forecast for Angvardi is from high above he serves his master. After engaging, Nidar will go to the center of the tower and won't move from that spot. Angvardi and Nidar share a health pool, so damaging one damages the other. Angvardi will cast Might Slash, which is a frontal cone attack, and Reign of Devastation that causes fire swirlies around the area. Nidar will cast Havoc Blast, which can be interrupted and will launch a fireball at a player and cause a large area to take damage. Magma Wake that will be cast on three players and cause them to spawn a magma pool every three seconds for nine seconds. And Inferno where he begins channeling fire in a frontal cone and spins around in circles. Inferno hits very hard and can quickly kill you if you don't avoid it. Next up is Ookbeard on his own little island in the north of the Reach. The spawn forecast emote for Ookbeard is his crew brings chaos. Ookbeard will stand on the barrel for the entire fight and shoot at players. He will cast Ookamal that hits all players in the area with a brown ball and will reduce movement speed by 30%. The movement speed part will hinder you for the next ability he casts which is Banana Broadside where the nearby ship will bombard the island that is broken down into three areas. You can avoid the barrages with a bit of dancing back and forth. Ookbeard will also cast Banana Bomber where he throws a banana at a location and does AoE damage. On the top of the mountain we have the Dragon Galakad. The emote for Galakad's spawn forecast is the great dragon rules the peaks he will cast gale force that is a frontal cone ability spiraling squall that surrounds him with tornadoes that will expand outwards and stun anyone hit by them and stormy weather that he channels causing large aoe circles to pop up in the area in the support crash in the northwest area of the reach is Dooselgore. the spawn forecast emote for Dooselgore is the brood is restless the first thing you'll notice when entering the area is that it's filled with dust that will begin choking you. If your choking bar gets to 100%, you pass out and spawn back outside. To avoid this, you'll want to grab a toxin antidote that is near the entrance of the crash and there will be one somewhere around the edge of the room that Dooselgore is in. Click the action button it gives you throughout the fight to reduce your choking bar. Dooselgore will cast Toxic Diffusion, which will cause a 40 yard AoE around Dooselgore gore if it is not interrupted left and right reap that will cause damage to anyone on that side of Dizzlegore and Claude Counter where he casts a shield that will deflect any frontal attacks on him. And an underwater cave on the west side of the reach is Gazraxis. The spawn forecast emote for Gazraxis is Fear the Terror Beneath the Waves. Gaz will cast Frost Breath which is a frontal cone attack and will freeze anyone hit for 3 seconds, Quaking Roar that causes rocks to fall from the ceiling, and Glacial Fang that will hit 3 nearby enemies and reduce their movement speed for 12 seconds. Glacial Fang can be interrupted. Next up on the eastern side of the island in a cave is Mad-Eye Carry. The spawn forecast emote for Carrie is their avarice is unyielding. Carrie has with him his first mate and navigator. These two must be killed before Carrie will begin taking damage. The first mate will cast Briny Barrage that will reduce movement speed for anyone within 30 yards of the impact point and the navigator will cast Shadow Flurry that causes her to teleport to a location and do AoE damage. When his crew is killed, Carrie will cast Captain's Rage that causes him to take 50% more damage and also deal 50% more damage. Carry casts Gangway, where he charges at a player, causing interrupts and damage to anyone within 8 yards, and devastating Ren, that is a frontal cone attack. In a cave near Market Village is where Bone Sifter Marwak spawns. The spawn forecast for Marwak is he defiles the remains of the fallen. Marwak will cast different types of scavenging abilities whenever he jumps to a new bone pile and starts making swirlies in the area that you'll want to avoid. He will also spawn adds when the scavenging channel is done. After the wild scavenging channel, Marwak will cast Bone Meringue that shoots out swirling bones from his position and Bone Storm will cause damage to anyone within 15 yards. When he finishes with the damp scavenging channel, a rampant tide will spawn and must be killed before he can damage Marwak again because he casts a shield on Marwak. The rampant tide will also cast Bubble Burster that spawns large AoE patches 
and Tidal Uprising that damages players around him. Lastly is the Heated Scavenging Channel, where he'll be empowered with fire and cast Wild Flames that does damage to enemies within 10 yards of the impact site, and Torrid Upheaval that causes large AoE patches on the ground. In the Siege Crash on the east side of the Reach is where Volcanic spawns. The spawn forecast emote for Volcanic is its wings leave ashes in their wake. Volcanic casts Scorching Breath that is a frontal cone attack and can be interrupted Supernova that targets three players and will cause a large area to explode after a short delay. And Volcanic also casts Overflowing Magma that will cause fire elemental adds to spawn. And for the last rare, we have the hardest one to reach, Warden Entrix, who spawns in the back of the War Crush. The spawn forecast emote for the Warden is, she binds those within her grasp. To get to Warden Entrix, you'll enter the same entrance you do for Pyrachnus, but take a right when entering the large room and head towards the stairs. There will be a lot of elite mobs in between you and the stairway that will hopefully leash back by the time you get to the platform at the top of the stairs. If not, you'll need to kill them since you can't be in combat when clicking the teleport pad. When you teleport up to the next platform, there will be a hallway and room you'll need to run through. Try and go over the same strategy you did to get to the stairs with having the elites leash back. At the end of the hallway is Warden Entrix's room. Entrix will cast Stasis Traps that spawns traps under 5 players and if not avoided they will stun you for 6 seconds. Summon Warp Crystal will spawn a crystal that will begin bringing in reinforcements, full lockdown where she channels the spell and damages players around her, and Azure Blast that is an AoE cast and can be interrupted. After Entrix is killed, there will be a gemstone in one of the back rooms that you can click to return back to the entrance of the crash. Besides the 16 rare spawns, there is also a storm chest mini event, and if you're lucky enough to not have a bug out, you kill mobs that spawn in the area to gain electrical charges, and then use the action button ability to send those charges to four nearby conduits. Once all four conduits are charged, a charged drake will spawn, which you can kill to unlock the chest. There are also elemental events that spawn at the frost stone vaults area. The event can be fire, air, earth, and water. It requires you kill five elite elementals in the area before you can start attacking the boss. I've gotten a primordial stone of the associated elemental type from the boss every time I've done this event. Each profession is also able to spawn a rare when they find a certain item. For gathering professions, you just gather until you find that resource. For crafting professions, you'll need a random drop that you use to craft an item that will spawn the rare. Pay attention to general chat because a lot of people will give a heads up when they are about to spawn these rares. That's all for today's video on how to efficiently farm rare mob spawns in Forbidden Reach. I hope you found these tips and strategies helpful and that you'll be able to use them to increase your chances of obtaining the new loot and rewards. Farming rare mobs can be a challenging and sometimes frustrating experience. But obtaining the armor drops, Sakara bolt keys, and the upgrade items can be worth it for your alts or for those who don't raid. So keep exploring the Forbidden Reach. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.